Unmanned aerial vehicles, commonly known as drones, are now trendy in various fields including videography and photography. They are also used in conservation, infrastructure, public safety, surveillance and aerial mapping. Also in inspection, emergency, rescue services as well as in agriculture. Fahari Aviation, a subsidiary of Kenya Airways, offers customized end-to-end -end solutions in these fields and supports not only operations but also training. In agriculture, the operator has made great strides in helping businesses to apply this technology to enhance efficiency among other benefits. The operator is using drones to spray fertilizers and pesticides, for example. So beyond spraying and spreading, we're also offering solutions in crop health surveillance. So what crop health surveillance actually does is that you're able to acquire images. And the good thing about drone images is they come georeferenced. So you're able to patch them up, you're able to see how your field is performing. If you're a large-scale farmer, you can tell what parts of your field are struggling and that's where now we are bringing in the precision agriculture solution. So you're able to get input exactly where it's required in the quantities that it's required. We are currently involved with tea farmers, uh, one of them being Kipkebe Limited, uh, part of the Sassini group. We are helping them spread fertilizer in this rainy season. Using drones in agriculture can help decrease time, labor and resources. There are so many advantages that come with it. First is, of course, efficiencies in terms of cost. So you're looking at reduction. Instead of you just spreading fertilizer across the whole farm, you're able to attack areas or inject that fertilizer where it is required. So there are cost efficiencies brought by that. Additionally, there are also yield improvements that come with this. Your yield per acre or yield per hectare is improved. Uh, what we've seen also uh, from the, the, the farmers that we've spoken to, it also helps fight theft of inputs. Uh, we've seen instances where farms, especially big farmers, are losing fertilizer and all that. Fertilizer has become a hot topic from a cost perspective. And there are instances where farmers have expressed that they are losing the input that's given up to the workers. So that also helps from that uh, security aspect. So from those cost efficiencies themselves, not just looking at mechanizing ag agriculture, you're also looking at stopping the theft of uh, farm inputs. Fahari Aviation is among the institutions that have been approved by the regulator, that is Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, to provide drone operations and training services in Kenya. It started operations in July 2021 and had trained over 50 students as at November 2022. We are now able to train the entire suit all the way to instructor level. So the most basic training is remote pilot license. You can either select to do multi-rotor or fixed wing. Beyond that, we also offer trainings in specialized areas such as photography, mapping, surveillance, infrastructure inspections. This is because all these require different uh, set of skills in terms of uh, flying competency of the pilot and the maneuvers that are required to be made during all these tasks. Training is important as part of enforcing professional use of drones. According to civil aviation regulations, a drone cannot be imported into the country without approval. An organization owning a drone and intending to use it must have what is known as Remote Operating Certificate, ROC. A drone operator or pilot must be licensed to, upon training, for those who have been trained outside Kenya and want to operate in Kenya, they will have to take some training in order to convert their foreign licenses into Kenyan licenses. Currently, we are the only licensed center to convert foreign acquired licenses from ICAO contracting states to convert them to Kenyan licenses. Licenses are issued by state agencies and state agencies prescribed to local law. So, for example, if I go train in the UK and get a license, a UK issued, UKCAA issued license. UKCA is the United Kingdom Civil Aviation Authority. For me to practice and operate in Kenya, I'd need that license recognized by the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. For that to happen, entities such as ourselves and the KCA do issue guidelines on how you can convert 
your foreign acquired license to a locally recognized Kenyan license. Training is very short. What we have is a three-day training and of course an exam for that. In the training setup, we also operate a drone club. Uh, what the drone club does, it brings together enthusiasts, hobbyists and professionals uh, in the drone space that allows them to practice and participate in club activities. Let's now go to the field for some practical lessons and we join Michael Lengare, Fahari Aviation's chief instructor, who begins by explaining to us the various types of drones. Karibu Alex. Asante Michael. Yeah, yes. Welcome to our training facility here. Uh -huh. uh, please, I've, uh, I've never seen such a, a, a huge drone. Yes, so this, this is, is a drone. Yes, this is a uh, drone. Uh, 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 these are all drones you can see here. Wow. So this is the Agras T30. It's uh, an agricultural drone. Mm -hmm. So we use, uh, used in agricultural applications, mostly for spraying. As you can see, it has a really huge tank. Wow. It's among the largest drones we have in our fleet. Mm -hmm. It can do 40 acres in an hour uh -huh. spraying. Okay. You can you're imagine. Allowed to touch. Yes, you're allowed to touch. <laughs> Welcome, Karibu Sana. You can see how big it is. Wow. So uh, this this is our VTOL. Yeah. It's called a vertical takeoff for landing. So it typically looks like a normal aircraft, but the only difference now because of these four additional rotors you see on the side, mm. it's able to take off. It's similar. How heavy is it? It's not so heavy. You can see, and you'll, you'll discover all of this is just made of styrofoam. Mm -hmm. But you see the applicability of how it works. Yes. Uh, it's just common material, but in this case, it's able to take off uh, vertically and then transition to a normal aircraft. So this reduces, you don't necessarily need a runway to operate with this one. So you find this is mostly used for where you need high endurance or long flight times. So especially in areas like conservation, security, surveillance, mapping of large pieces of land, you're able to do this in one battery or one sweep. You're able to cover a large... How far can it go? Uh, in terms of range, can do about 150 kilometers range. Yes, and now that, in terms of height, altitude, altitude will go up to about 15,000 feet above sea level. So here we are about 6,000. So we have about 11,000 feet that this can still cover. But currently in Kenya, we are allowed to fly up to 400 feet. However, with the necessary permissions and safety, you're able to get approval to do higher altitudes. And this one? Mm -hmm. So, Coming to this, this is another multi-rotor. It's similar to that. The only difference you find, this has four, while the T30, the T30 has six. Mm -hmm. So the only difference, that can carry way, way more. But this applicability, mm -hmm. this you'll find at the bottom, what you see here. Mm -hmm. This is what we refer to as a payload. Okay. So currently it's fixed with a LIDAR, mm -hmm. uh, a, a LIDAR payload. However, this can be changed. You can change, so we currently have a payload that even thermal cameras, normal day daytime vision cameras, LGB cameras, as well as LiDAR for multiple applications. Even when mapping a steep slope of land, with this you're able to even account for that gradient, not just uh, coming out as a flat piece of well, land. Quite yeah. a big variety of uh, drones. Yes. And for us, we are used to the, the like that one for filming. Yes, yes. Yeah. So this, I think, is the most common drone in Kenya. Even in, when we talk about drones, that's the first thing that comes to people's mind. So here at Fahari, we use that mostly for training. However, it does have a very nice camera. So even for filming and photography, it does serve the purpose. But for training our students, we believe it's among one of the best uh, training drones we have in the market. According to Michael, Fahari Aviation's training meets the demands of an emerging and fast-growing technology. Currently, our target market is people who are looking to use drones either to further or make their work more efficient or to use drones in a way bit better to further their career as a new career venture somebody who's looking at drones as a way of how can drones help me either in agriculture in security make my work easier those are the people we're targeting to train as well as also hobbyists who are looking to use drones both safely legally and securely the wider goal is to promote public acceptance of this technology in the community. We are able to participate in the National Wildlife Census, that is in the conservation bit. Uh, this was held in Savo West and we were able to contribute to that data set that was accomplished during that particular mission. So also we've been able to conduct some infrastructure inspections in collaboration with Kenjan. This was held at um, Olkaria, where we were able to in inspect um, the power plants at that location, demonstrate the capability of the various equipment we, that we had on that day. The institution stands out because of its world-class training facilities, trained instructors, extensively developed training manuals and curriculum 
and a thorough site operation set up. We are getting a lot of international interest, especially from uh, this particular region. We are currently processing a client, that's a corporate client from South Sudan. Uh, we are looking at other corporate clients from uh, Botswana and Malawi. And we have individuals from these countries that come and train in Kenya. You'll note that Kenya in the uh, unmanned aircraft space, uh, we've set up the framework, the legal framework that allows civilian operation. And gi that gives advantage because that's when uh, civil players and operators are able to acquire accreditation to operate drones and conduct a drone business. Mm -hmm. So that helps us as for Hari Aviation. Mm -hmm. We are getting a lot of recognition. As our neighbors ramp up their, um, uh, their structure from a legal perspective, we we'll, we'll fill in the gap for the time being. To the Kenyans out there in the diaspora, kindly look out for Fari Aviation products and services. When you are abroad and when you're in country, we do offer training solutions. And part of our enterprise solution beyond agriculture, we do offer infrastructure inspections, we do offer mapping. Mapping services are very important. And we also do offer security surveillance. At Champs Media, we are glad that our very own Eric Maweu is now a certified drone operator thanks to the training he got from Fahari Aviation. Some of the new things I've learned is navigation, flight planning, and how to read weather before you, f you fly. And also, one of the things that I've come to learn is good to assess risk before you fly. The things I've gained from Fahari Aviation is one, I've gained confidence, and number two, I, I now understand the regulation pertaining operating a drone in Kenya. Fahari Aviation aims not only to lead in unmanned aircraft systems training in Africa, but also in providing business solutions and it intends to venture into use of drones in urban air mobility. We are looking at urban air mobility or what we call advanced air mobility. Mostly fully electric, eVTOL, electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, or what you basically call flying cars. We, we, we see this as a solution to the future of transportation, but also more environmentally sustainable, because this will be uh, electric aircraft that will not be using the current fossil fuel powered uh, machines.